and Gambit Gaming. Let's start by taking a look and at... And then use that Sivir to really snowball it. So, a lot of pressure going to be on Gambit's decision-making this game. They want to try and stop Fnatic from breaking that win streak record. Can Fnatic go 10 and 0 here in the summer split? Jump on Twitter and let us know. Hashtag FNC win or hashtag GMB win. The flags are lit up. Reneva's going to keep himself alive for a few seconds longer. That's a TP top lane from Kabashot. It is C. Let's take a look. Onslaught of Shadows. Kabashot, he's going to pull the trigger this time round. The focus is Reckless. He's going to get knocked backwards as the Monsoon is a little late to the party. Reckless will be taken out for first blood as Kabashot does what he couldn't yesterday. Huni has teleported in, but he's trying to run away. Chrono breaks back to base. And Yellowstar survives by the skin of his teeth. Diamond wants more. No mana for Reynova. The resonating strike comes through and the ricochet will bounce the damage across Fnatic. Gambit have two kills. The Sonic Wave will not net them a third and it looks like they get away. This bottom lane. Now Sivir starts shining because the map opens up. She has more things she can do. And Reino, hey, but... Reino, he gets knocked away. Bitsy was not hoping for the Shurima shuffle to do that. Reino was going to keep landing those slows with the barrels, but the rise and the conquering sands will give Gambit their third kill. Huni's Parallel coming, convergence. Though. Here comes Huni. He's not going to get the stun, but he will get the slow. Time wind is on. Chrono Break will be available in a moment or two, as Huni's going to need it to stay alive. He flashes away. No, I'm lying. The cooldown's much longer. Huni is going to be able to get out clean. This bottom lane. Now Sivir starts shining because the map opens up. She has more things she can do. And Reino, hey, but... Reino, he gets knocked away. Betsy was not hoping for the Shurima shuffle to do that. Reino was going to keep landing those slows with the barrels, but the rise and the conquering sands will give Gambit their third kill. Huni's Parallel coming, convergence. Here comes Huni. He's not going to get the stun, but he will get the slow. Time wind is on. Chrono Break will be available in a moment or two, as Huni's going to need it to stay alive. He flashes away. No, I'm lying. The cooldown's much longer. Huni is going to be able to get out clean. Maybe enough to keep Fnatic down. We'll talk about that in a moment. Huni's coming in with the phase dive. He's got the time winder out as the parallel convergence should be enough to stun Diamond as well as Cabochon. Huni is going to get a time winder oh, for one boy. and a phase dive for two. Okay. And then it's here. Do you want a team fight? Double again. Take a look. Huni, he's used phase dive already. Oh, no. One of his dashes, there's no flash available, but he does have that time-delayed hologram. He's going to jump back to it as the parallel convergence throws down in the middle. Time winder for a slow. Now Febivin's joined. Huni is going to jump in with phase dive. We see the hammer come down from Febivin, but he's cut off. The Emperor's Divide locks him back. We're going to be looking for those accelerated shock blasts, and it looks like Gambit will get themselves another taste of Huni. Batao goes down. Kabshat, though, should have recalled way earlier to be up around this top side. So Reckless and Yellow Star, they're coming. Reckless is alone, and he's down! Betsy just 1v1s him, and now he's turned his attention onto Febivin. Febivin, however, will be able to use that shape-shifting weapon and even Look it out. Look at the bot lane, though, Trevor here. Gambit is still pushing in the Hathaway from before. They still have Teleport and Cover Shot as well. Fnatic, they're very far away, so one for one in kills. That's another tower now for Gambit in the bot lane. Gambit want to play gatekeepers and they want to maintain control. Go to Pepper. Flash, Exhaust, Tivis is all available. He's going to throw it onto Rain over. Here comes the rest of Fnatic. Parallel Convergence should be able to stun up too. And it nice does. Kick. Febivin and Huni are onto Gosu as well as Forgiven. He's been dropped as Kabashot is trying to rampage across the fight. We see the Onslaught of Shadows going forward. Huni is picking this fight. He does have that hologram to jump back to. He gets damage onto Cabo as he flashes away. Shield comes up for that Parallel Convergence and no Sonic Wave as he makes it out. Two for two trade. Be in from the side with the flank. Then you have that flash tipper which goes to Pepper and this massive one. Come on, you can just do it like this. They're going in. Reckless has been stunned up and he's taken out. Kabashot's got the first kill as Huni is trying to put damage on the back line. He's already used the Chrono Break to get away as Betsy has dropped the partner. But that's a double kill from the Shock Blast as Febivin is trying to save Fnatic's hopes. He's got the hammer out and the hammer's down because Betsy sinks in the fangs. Okay, that's where we invest all our wards. Oof. This time around, it's near the dragon. Fnatic though, very quickly cleared it out because now Gambit weren't there to protect and had to just run away. Oh! Wow. 
Kappa's holding the trigger. That's going to be Febivan on the side. Kappa's actually focusing down Febivan. Febivan's been able to flash away, and we see that Gosu Pep has been dropped. He did manage to get the Tibbers out. Diamond has got so many Ren stacks, and it's not going to pop him, though. We do see Forgiven. It's going to be on the back line. He's down. Febivan's dashed forward. Febivan found Betsy, and after a messy, messy fight, Gambit lose four members, almost all of them. Fnatic are just playing around this massive moving turret that is Febivan. Wait, Mooney, wow. So That's the thing. When you see how that happened, but Mooney got a kill. When you play poke, it's just about forcing them so low to have to go back and give up all the control. Diamond here, he's caught behind enemy line. Uh, Diamond's down. That was a rough place to be. Fnatic find themselves two kills with no smite threat. Fnatic instantly is going to punish you, lead that into a Baron, and boom, suddenly. They get ahead and oh, the fight is starting. Yeah, the last time Fnatic were here, the fight didn't end well. This time round, Gosu's down though, and that will end well for Fnatic. We see Hooney's come back in. Yellow Star's channeling the monsoon as Cabochon is being focused out by Reckless. Feathervin is on the front line, and Hooli is going to use that chrono break all the way back. Rainover bonks the barrel on Betsy, taking him out, and Fnatic get three kills in a tower. Poke on towards Betsy, rather. Gonna land. Hooney jumps in. Betsy's gonna use the Emperor's Divide. We do see Hooney jumping backwards, and it's Gosu Pepper that gets popped. Well, Diamond's trying to pull aggro, but it won't be enough. After Betsy goes golden, he's in retreat. Super minions are onto the Nexus turret. Rainover's called Forgiven out, and Forgiven will get popped by Febivin. Fnatic are onto the Nexus, and they set a new European winning streak record, going 10 and 0 in summer. The first team ever to do it. Keep up some of the momentum from yesterday's win because they did look very good. They're facing off against the Unicorns of Love in our next game. Let's take the but that requires Rocket then to fall behind and like get it open to flanks or Vander to misplay on this Janna here and not disengage the fight at first. Remember the ulti from Nuke Dog. If you're grouped up moving in towards him, multiple guys are going to be stunned and then Echo jumps into you. So we'll see if Steve can find his opportunities and whether or not Power of Evil and Vardags can stick to Rocket for long enough. We heard a very heartbreaking story from Yankos as he was talking about Rocket's struggles and troubles all year long. Make the poison and you get that one-on-one -on -one fight. It is in favor of Power of Evil, but the long range here for Nuke Dog and the fact he can use his E, the slow, to stop it from going aggressive. Let's see Kikis. He's going to find Yankos here. Oh, Kikis is going to be in so much trouble. Down to 200 hit points. Yankos, he's going to go over with the tunnel. Prey Seeker not even needed. First blood. Because they can't sit there and try and like poke them out or, or, or clear the waves in time. Because then Rocket will always get damage on the towers and always land poke from Nuke Dog. So Unicorns have to be able to fight to win this game. Well, Power of Evil wants to keep himself healthy enough to fight. Picked up that Hextech Revolver as well as the tier. Now Steve does have Flash and Chrono Break. He's going to phase dive out, jump back in. Here comes the Parallel Convergence. Going to get the stun and a shield. Kickus is going to knock Steve away. Steve's holding on to that Flash. Knows he's going to get taken out. Relatively easy gank. That was the easy gank setup. You were talking. Uh, when Rocket played Echo yesterday, Steve was split pushing. Now we'll get to that in the a one second. He's gone in. We do see Mr. Riles is caught out. Those chompers are now down. Spell shields up, and Riles is going to flash away from the zap. Mega Death Rocket is available, but on the hunt, and flash is going to be used. Now Chachi points. He clicks. Vander's got caught out. We see the slow onto Mr. Riles. They're going for the dive. Oh, the Death Rocket gets knocked away. But Vardag still secures the kill. Another problem for Unicorns yesterday was the fact they couldn't split push. Had a shin. Let's see what happens oh, though. Nuketuck. Nuketuck's been caught out and Yankos is knocked up as well. Nuketuck is nuked by the Unicorns of Love. Kickers with a great engage. Vander trying to save lives with that monsoon. And you can see Mr. Rawls. He splits up trying to get Kickers and heal his son. We do see no flash available and he's going to get chunked down. With the Echo. And instead, Vardax has been able to move around the map. Gets how his kick is, though. He might be caught out. So, Nuketuck's going to fire that piercing arrow. Chain of Corruption should interrupt that body slam. And kick is fail flashes. He finds the wall. Teleport's coming out from Steve. Steve wants to find Power of Evil, and he does. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Phase time and time winder, and there's two kills on the board. Rocket, how ballsy are you? Baron is available. It's spawned 30 seconds ago. Steve is about to find Vardax. He gets knocked up by the Howling Gale as Hillisang is, is dropped on the back line. We looked at the Baron stats. Let's see if Unicorns have any chance of starting a fight. We need to get home guards on Mr. Chachi very, very fast. 
So another way for Unicorn to start in there. Just teleporting in straight away, though. Jealous Sung has already thrown down Unbreakable. Will, we see that Super Mega Death Rocket go wide. Another Miss Chains of Corruption. No one's surprised by that. Steve is going to phase dive onto Power of Evil. One of the damage threats is down, and now Vardax is left without any peel or protection. Vardax gets dropped as a third member of UOL drops. Chachi forced to run away with the roots between his legs, and Rocket now set their sights on an inhibitor. They've used Baron super effectively. And we really just get to see how hard it is for Unicorn to take the fight here. As soon as you... Because there's still 10,000 gold down. Got super minions to contest with, but I think that inhibitor will be respawning very, very soon. As we do see, Baron has been started. Teleport available for Chachi. Power of Evil's nowhere near, so this will be a... 3v4, 4v5 at best. Teleport available for Steve as well. Baron's going down. Can they get stolen away? Flash comes in. It's secured by an auto attack from Rawls. They're going to get a kill onto Kickass and flashes over the wall. Steve teleported in from behind. This could be the very final fight. A flash over the chompers as Yankos is trying to chomp down Vardax. Vardax, he can't kite and fight enough because Steve's phase dive phases him out of the map. I don't often use this phrase from our oceanic buddies, but that damage really is disgusting. Mr. Rawls is going to spell shield the body slam, and we do see the petrifying gaze from Unicorns of Love, but it's their chances, I feel, are petrified. Let me take that back. They've got two kills onto both Nuketuck and Steve. Mr. Rawls is still very healthy, and Yankos is tanking for days. Rocket. Relatively lengthy cooldown. So, Super Minions on the Nexus turret. Once somebody from UOL peels back, Unicorns, they're caught out! Chain of Corruption catches onto Power of Evil. Now we see the Parallel Convergence coming down. Hillisang's Unbreakable Will is going to get broken. Flame Chomp is splitting up Rockat's Engage and UOL backing away. Super Minions are still bashing down that Nexus turret. Unicorns doing their best to survive. Here's Chachi, Vengeful Maelstrom is on. He's trying to get in. Hillisang gets by Steve and Nuketuck, but there's no follow-up. Chrono Break comes backwards for Steve as Chachi is being focused down. Look at Power of Evil and Vardax. They can't get any real damage down. Chachi just gets chopped down as Steve jumps in on the Convergence. Super Minions are battling away under the turrets. The last turret on the Nexus. Rocket playing this one safe. There is a Void Rush available for Yankos. Yep. He can rejoin after spending some money and healing up. Just about staying here for Rocket. You still got those super minions, unicorns. Only four members to defend, to just stay around. Get that last tower, open up everything. Rocket looking strong. Well, unicorns of love trying to defend the Alamo, and it's not working out this time around. Vodax is stunned! And he is taken out by Rocket. Steve dives onto Power of Evil. Power of Evil had his flash but needed to run away. That petrifying gaze still not used. Rocket will pick up their first undefeated week in summer. Even out their head-to-head -head record against Origin. Let's see if the Wolves can indeed do that. As we get ready to start this game off, why don't you tweet your predictions at LOL Esports. That is going to be hashtag CWWIN or hashtag OGWIN. We're getting ready to get into the game. Guys, the crowd's hyped. How about you at home? Let's see what happens as we get loaded onto the Rift to start this one off. Now we have seen Just Origin. Shook goes ahead. Gets himself a side of crab, looks to set up in the mid lane. Peke could be in trouble. In comes the no cow. Flash. They're gonna combo up on him. Shockwave knock. They missed that, but Peke still goes down to Young Buck. I like it. I like what Unlimited did there, but because we in Peke's mind, he's waiting for the W animation from Alistar and he wants to flash to dodge that combo. However, Unlimited knew that Peke was waiting for that, so he just Q flashes forward. Knocks him back. Yes, it may look silly that suddenly Soren Ultimates misses, but that was the correct play by the Copenhagen Wolves, and they get first blood. Yeah, now the Copenhagen Wolves might be in some trouble. Rather, just Young Buck, as Soaz found him, and so did Mithy. Soaz will take. As it stands, Origin really are able to get so much done all around this Dragon's river. Here. Amazing. Yeah, and it's. You really know there's gaps in your vision when a guy that big can get through. Young Buck's in some trouble. In he comes. Ooh, he's gonna dodge the belly bump. Young Buck's still slow. There's the big barrel coming out. Mithy was tanking the tower. And even though the wild growth is young, Young Buck is still gonna go down to Niels. Yeah, inferior vision control in the bottom side of the map. And following this bottom side, Young Buck looks to come back in, but Amazing hasn't left here. He's waiting for round number two. Young Buck's under tower. He may be in so the trap. So SDP as well, so this might be a whole lot of party in the bot lane. Yep, there he uses it. Mithy comes around the side. Young Buck, he's got no wild growth again, and this time it's Amazing who takes him down. Four members of Origin down bottom. They can run to him. However, they need to find Shook. 
do indeed. Shook is inbound, but he has to turn around. The rest of his team wasn't really able to keep up, and they Origin once again able to disengage. Unlimited still taking a lot of damage. Freeze as well. Barrel comes in, and he gets knocked into them. Down goes Freeze. The shockwave lands on Niels and takes out half his health. Take a brings in a tier there with Scaly and Shook. Run four. Oh, Niels. Whoosh. Able to get just out of the way. And Shook catches nothing but air. Unlimited catches all the damage. And he's taken down Origin now with a man advantage. Starting to run forward and chase these wolves back into their own base, howling as they go. Shook, wild growth on him, but he's still getting chunked. The barrel knocks him into his tower, and he's taken down by Niels. The rockets are flying. Soaz chasing down Soren. Origin have turned this game. Poke. He's in, they're going for it. He's gonna get knocked oh, off. The, there's the Whirling Death, the ball's gonna whip. Unlimited, and the rest of the Wolves are getting knocked all over the place. The tower is lasering down Soaz, but he jumps back in, and it looks like it's gonna be Soren and Youngbuck already down. Origin can now peck away and finish off the turret and an inhibitor. Alfonso does it again. Miffy with the beautiful disengage, but he knows what's coming. Drops the pink ward. The second the Wolves keep moving forward, they know that there's a Rengar coming in invisible. Pop the Howling Gale, interrupt his leap, monsoon him out, reset the fight, get away from that Oyana ball and clean up. Keep cleaning up. Big explosions to take down the Alistar. This game One is kill on the board all going to be over. Wolves. They cannot get much done. Shook continuing to try and find an opening, but he's forced away. Now it's just the bare nexus, and it looks like Origin in 31 and a half minutes. If they can finish this one off, they'll take another kill on this. Shook have finished the game against the Wolves. One in 10. One kill. For the Wolves and kills for Origin and just tells the story of the game. That middle tower is still at 85% HP. It's a controlled game. Controlled game, continuous poke. Very old school type of composition. Giants and Elements are setting up to meet for the second time this split. So let's get Flea. Gonna be an explosive mid game, at least I hope so. Yeah, we'll have to see. And what do you guys think? Why don't you go ahead and tweet us your predictions? That is at LL Esports, GIA winner, EL win to see if Giants can 2 0 Elements in this split. Both teams running some. Slightly different stuff than what we expected to see from them. And we'll be loading up onto the rift right here for number two in this summer split matchup between Giants Gaming and Elements. Bot lane even Steven, so the only advantage can be made in the top lane. The very telegraphed ganks on both sides, so... Yeah, I'm waiting for first blood, like we were waiting for Godot, and then... Might turn out to be quite the wait. Oh, Jay Wow. He looks like he wants it right about now into the brushes. You can't hide. Okay. And in Minar form, Jay Wow is going to do it solo. Jay Wow is past his massive. I'm going to take first blood. Elements in the lead. Receive. That's actually a doing. cool interaction between Thresh and Alistar. Oh. Rogan goes in. Shurima shuffle. And he gets it off. And Dexter into the bump. He wants to come to the dance, too. A barrel comes out. And Pepe is close to going down. Has the shield. Throws the shockwave. Can he get away? Not from the soldiers. Froggen pokes him down. Every time I try to explain something, Elements interrupt me with a kill. Beautiful move there from Froggen. He knew Dexter was coming. Come out, shuffle into the body slam. Pepe Nero finds himself dead in the water. Uh, Froggen might find himself as well. Dragon's Descent, Whirlib runs right over him. They are, however, letting Elements make plays on them. Now they're going to turn their attention on the bottom side, though, with Frederick at the back. Cavs might be zoned off of this one. The hook, that was right in front of a minion, Godfrey. And Audrey will finish that one off. A little dangerous play. Godfrey's running in, and there's Not the Sivir run. They get the ignite off. They throw the box. In comes Frederick Tabs. He's got no flash. He's going to run in, and Frederick is going to run him over. Ironically, Tabs felt a little too comfortable there because he was mind gaming Godfred constantly by hiding behind creeps, but then, yeah, slightly too cocky because on the hunt gets popped, but now Whirlip gets cancelled. Yes, he does. In dragon form, couldn't get the jump off. Barreled back towards the top, has to burn his flash. Jay oh, he's wow, going down. chasing after him. Dexter runs right into him, picks him off. Meanwhile, down bottom, Nif was caught on a chain. Executing. Yeah, J.O. should just be pushing the bot lane here, facilitating a rotation. Elements can hold the Giants in the mid lane with that Sun Dish tower. And then go back into the jungle and go in, but here's on the hunt. Oh, denied. denied. It's pushed back. And meanwhile, while the hook was finally landed, it's Godfrey that went down. Dexter took the incentive to bop him in the face. It's looking for a, you know, fight fire with fire. How do you fight a dragon? You simply get five of them. And you beat the dragon with Aspect of the Dragon. 
Sometimes it works. Teleport coming in. Warlip doesn't cancel it. They turn their attention to him. Nif's gonna get the knockup. JWoww goes Meganar. The ball Ooh. lands on everyone from Elements, and they might have stayed too long as Giants turn around the collapse. Frederick picks up Froggen. Dexter gets hit by the ball of Pepe, and now Nif is bailing out. Headbutts, but Audrey takes him down anyways. All of a sudden, three Elements members down. So he might actually Catch some of the Elements members off guard. They bought this time. Here's Teleport from Whirlip, too. And Frederick's also going to come in around the back. Now, Elements are bailing out of this situation. Frederick, uh, Whirlip's not going to try and let him back away from this one. Lantern's thrown out as he go right Look back. Look at Pepe Nero. The He's dragon. the man to watch right now. Pepe is coming around the back of the pit as the dragon is being tanked by Whirlip right now. Audrey's taking a whole lot of damage, but now he turns his attention, and Froggen's already down. The rest of Elements have to scatter. JWoww's gone Mega, and Frederick's gonna go down, throws Whirlip away to the rest of Elements, but Nif as he follows, gets caught by a chain. Won't quite go down. Now JWoww and Megan are being chased up by Pepinero. Very scattered fight. It's a two for one so far. Not quite sure what Pepe was doing early in the fight, but it first Corky. Triforce is a really solid item for a first initial spike, but it doesn't get more value the more items you finish because obviously the Triforce box is off your base damage oh, and nip. Goodbye. Carve themselves up a side of beef elements, find themselves without a cow. That's gonna mean giants. Yeah, flash. Start to move towards Baron. There's he usually does that. All right, Frederick. Oh, uh, that could be some trouble, but he doesn't go down just yet. JWoww, however, into Meganar form is going to be distracted by him as Whirlip moves in for Frog and Dexter and Tabs. In comes Nif, newly revived, and Nif is caught, but nonetheless, they lose Frederick, they lose Whirlip. Elements in a good situation here. Good reaction by Elements. They peel back where they have to, and then Nif, the returning support, proves to be the hero here. Returning back from base into that fight. Good knockup. Elements, two kills. You want to watch the items? It's just JWoww against Whirlup. You want to outfit push him. Here we go on the hunt, Pyra. Yep, that's the indicator for the fight to start. Nif is going to go ahead and pop his coin. Giant still unable to find an opening. Nif will get the knockup. And now Frederick, out. there's the ball. It's going to connect on 3 however, but they don't have the follow-up damage. Pepe gets shut down by Tabs. And there's the Emperor's Divide. Shurima demands that Frederick was going to go down. And the rest of Giants will follow. Only Whirlib stands between elements and victory from here. Yeah, Pepe Nero reaches in. Good Oriana ulti, but no follow-up. And then Whirlib and Frederick Get caught against Frog and he says, do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Shirima? 1v2s and perfectly, and Elements poised to take the victory. Poised to take it indeed. No one left to oppose them but one half dragon. Elements have four, and they're about to pick off Giants to secure the victory that they were denied earlier in the split. And let's see if they can get themselves back up. A 2-0 week for Elements, and they needed it. K is gearing up to take SK Gaming as they look to 2-0 and rate. Go ahead and hit up at LOL Esports with hashtag H2KWin or hashtag SKWin if you think when these two take it out on the rift. Who's going to come away with it at the end of the day? H2K or SK? So we're getting ready to start up. You can see history of the team and all the way into the present. Yep. The crowd's still here, still making noise. And here we go, onto the rift. You can do a lot of damage. For SK's team too. I mean, they've got look, they've got some linking threat themselves. Look right now what H2K is doing. They're setting up for the signature five-man bot lane party. Ryu pushes in mid lane and moves first. Ooh, Nearly so close. Oduamne is in the bot lane. I believe he got spotted by a ward. Yeah, Sven Skarn's gonna go ahead and find Lulex. Throws the big barrel. That's first blood, and it goes to N rated. H2K just don't seem in sync right now. Oduwame continues to be down in the CS. Now, Manuel, back to the mid. Spence Garen shows himself. And they just keep him away from his own tower. He's going to go down after two big ultis Just from as SK. I praise the positioning from Ryu. When you run a Jace, you have to take a choice whether you will hit the minions or Oduwame going in. Yes, he is. Freddy's in mini nar. It's going to be a while to stack it up. Three snares. He has to burn his flash. Odo is going to get out of dodge, though. Lulex coming back around the side. Is this just a feint? It looks like it. Acting. Prey Seeker, Narbar stacking. Oh, he's out. He's going to be a nice and safe. Fox is there for defense as well. They might be baiting this one. And Odo Omne go is down. Fox tricked by Freddy. 
I thought for a second he was going to flank, but yeah. This, this, the next JCQ is going to be big. Yeah, but they're going to have to make a move now. Candy Panda's taking a lot of damage from that Shock Blast. H2K decides this is the time. Can they secure the Dragon? They get pushed back. Lulex is there. The Monsoon is going to keep them alive, and it is secured. They take it away from SK. Meanwhile, though, Odawamne is going to be the one taken down. And it is a one for none. Yarnan trying to beat a hasty retreat. Look at Bot Wave, though. Should be able to do it. There is a big yield, some of them. See if. SK can continue to press their advantages here. Zodawamne and Lulex are under the tower, but they turn their attention oh. to Candy Panda. Wild Growth is on him. He's still going to go down. It's Odawamne who takes him down for his first kill and rated a bit low, but it's going to be spent <laughs> coming around the side. Will he be able to keep him alive? The barrel is Jace. down. Ooh. Shock Blast misses. There is the explosive cast. But Ryu's there, and he is going to be able to get the big hammer to the Lulu. Yarnin in some trouble from Fox, but flashes out of danger. Two kills for H2K. We'll have four to one on the edge. The gold lead, about 5,000 here still. Dragons have been even, but H2K are the ones who are fighting back. It's SK that need to be able to make these plays before the game gets out of hand. And Lulex is the one who's going to be trying to start this, but he runs into Fox and Spence Garen, and he's taken down alone and friendless. That was not the Void Rush you were looking for. It means a bigger shield, it means more damage on Ryu. Look at that shield. He blocks Caitlyn up, straight up, straight up. Look at that poke. And you can't stop those shock blasts. H2K look like they found themselves in opening the armor shred. There is going to be the barrel away. Candy Panda's in a little bit of trouble as Odawamne is causing some havoc here. Candy will go down to Ryu. Odo will finally fall. Picked up by Fox. Freddy and Meganar, though, is going to make H2K reevaluate this fight in a one for one trade. That dragon and Candy Panda, we can just engage. Back Maybe off. it's SK that can re-engage on this one. Freddy was taking a little bit of poke, but he was able to return fire. Lulex going go. in, wants to start this fight. It's going to be Freddy, and then rated that are low, but Fox comes around the side as Freddy picks up Lulex, fighting as the blue buff Fox is, is right in the middle of the mix. Oops, Spence Garen, he can't connect the barrel. Odawan is going to get knocked, however, by the big one. And Yarn is in trouble. He's caught, but he manages to get a pick off on his Sven before it all happens. Odo's going to follow him down, however, and Lulex has to tunnel away the rest of H2K. Not there. Emperor's Divide, you are denied. And SK Gaming pick up another kill there. Three for one, but Candy eats a big shock blast. Can they finish this Baron in time? Yeah, we talked about how fed Ryu was and how strong he was, but they fought without him. Now Ryu just wants to. Poke him down. Still keeping time on this Baron. Freddy, Meganar gets the That's big one. one. That's a shutdown, though, for Ryu, because Singh pops the monsoon. All of a sudden, That's they two. went to back. Two kills, the Baron assist, and Ryu chasing down and raided in Candy Panda. And That's a three. triple! How about it, Ryu? Holy moly, what did Ryu eat for breakfast? Fantastic play. Connects on the right targets at the right time, and gets some assistance from Baron buff, and yeah. It's okay. Hopefully you learned your lesson. Don't fight without Ryu, because holy moly, he does a lot of damage. I think SK had to learn that lesson, too. Don't fight when Ryu's there. Six and one. Teleport in for Odo. They're going to look to rush this Baron down. It's spotted by SK's ward, but still some time on Candy Panda, Fox, and Freddy. Sven could attempt the Miracle Steal, but he's got to be careful to dodge the Shock Blast. And Raided is there as well. In goes Odo Wamne. They're going to turn their attention with just him. Big Barrel to try and push him back. Teleport now for Freddy as he's come back off of Fountain. Sure Odo's still like standing that. strong. Baron going low. Sven Skarin comes it. in. The steal is complete. Sven Skarin comes up with it. And Freddy picks off Odo Wamne. Dare to face themselves on directly. They're going to give this tower up. Now they go in, but it is going to be Odo going down. Oh, no. Candy Panda gets the kill credit, and SK Gaming can now take themselves an inhibitor on the back of a big mini wave. They surf it to a couple objectives and a kill. But that leaves them a man down here. Janus Shield on the turret. The mini wave is a little slow to arrive, so Odo can get back. BT finished Keep the defense. on Ryu. Another BF sword there. A lot of damage. Oh, looking for Yarnin. Can't quite get it. Lulex is the one who's going low. Fox is low. down by Fox. The Monsoon will keep him alive, but it's Fox that gets taken down as well. Yarnin, ace in the hole, follows through, but he's got a shield. Sven tanking the damage. They will finally find the inhibitor turret. All said and done. It's a two for one trade, and SK will find inhibitor number two looking to close out this game against H2K. Steve will be able to continue to force their way in. Odawamne is around the side. H2K moving into position. Dragon started. It's going down so quickly, but they made their move. Dragon's low. It's going to get picked Aspect. up. There's Aspect. Can SK do it with this? They pick up one kill on Odo. They're going to look for two. Lulex is down. Ryu's fired. It's Candy Panda running wild. Big 
shut down on Ryu, courtesy of Fox, and a triple kill for Candy Panda. Can Escape do this, you ask? And yes, they can. Five kills, five dragons, aspect of the dragon, and they're looking to close out this game. Nothing stands in their way. 50 seconds on those death timers. Aspect of the dragon, aspect of SK Gaming. 45 minutes into this one, they're melting through the remaining objectives. Easy peasy, let's face tank ourselves some turrets. And SK Gaming, after a very rough start to this split, will finally manage to grab another win on the board and take down H2K. And after such a victory,